Sacred Circle will continue with a sacred. wonderful things um, about doing this is that I get to have people on that I really enjoy being with. <laughs> <laughs> um, what Sharon is doing is spinning on this absolutely phenomenal antique spinning wheel. Now I have a new spinning wheel um, that I just got that I haven't gotten together yet. But I've had the <laughs> opportunity, well I've been, we've been a little bit busy this summer. Busy. Uh, <laughs> but um, one of the things that uh, I've had the opportunity to do is spin with Sharon um, at uh, Sharon and Dave's home and this is just absolutely phenomenal. Sharon, what I'd like you to do while you're doing that, because one of the wonderful things about spinning is that your hands are busy but your mouth can keep going, which is great, <laughs> um, is tell us a little bit about spinning and weaving and the goddess and this time of year. All at once? <laughs> <That's not very laughs> well. Um, oh, well. All cultures, as far as I can determine, quite far back have some form of spinning and weaving deity. It's not always a goddess. Um, the Ashanti have a spider man. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, the Navajo have spider woman. There's Scandinavian goddesses that are spinners. Of course, everybody knows Arachne and mm -hmm. Athena uh, and their little altercation. <laughs> and um, let's see, who else is there? Oh, there's Ixchel, Amaterasu, um, bunches and bunches of them. Ariadne in the uh, uh, Oh, yes, the labyrinth. The labyrinth. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and in most of these cultures, um, the whole concept of weaving and spinning and the, the web of the world and spider woman sitting on some rock kind of manipulating the things about her. Um, spinning, is, it's used as a metaphor, I guess, for life. And one of the things Kate and I were discussing in terms of spinning and sewing is that you can use that sort of imagery in your meditations and in your spell working for improving facets of your life that you might wish to change, just as a spider can run in and out along its web and capture various insects that it wants or um, spin its web from one twig to another. So you can do it as well. And with weaving, if you think of your life, weaving is a, a craft of interlacing separate threads. It's not like knitting or crochet, which are continuous threads. Weaving is separate threads into a pleasing pattern, one hopes. If you think of your life as a tapestry or as a weaving, you can see where in some sections you have this wonderful purple bit. In another one you have a very pretty circle. And then there's this snarl over here on the left that maybe you're not quite as happy with. <laughs> but you, could, you can reweave that. Maybe you can cut out threads and change them. Or maybe you can put a new color in. Or weave another layer over the top of it and hide it real good. <laughs> so now one, of the, one of the things that um, we talked about with all of you last time, I let all of you know that um, there was a shawl being woven um, and we're going to show that to you in our next segment and it's absolutely phenomenal. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of weaving that many hands and many souls and many pieces of, of thread from this community have gone into um, along with bits of shells and charms and stones and myrrh beads and all kinds of really wonderful things and it's being woven and put together for someone in particular for Reverend Lilith Dorsey as a comfort shawl and this whole idea was Sharon's idea. Um, Sharon and Dave showed up at Caduceus with their loom and um, presented this idea to everybody and I quite frankly sat down, sat down and had so much fun just doing the weaving and feeling the energy and feeling the flow and the whole idea of getting this together and putting this together so enchanted me that I am now, I now have a loom on order. 
because one of the things that we should probably tell you is that weaving and spinning are addictive. <laughs> they really are. And um, I've been a knitter for most of my 45 years, um, having a mother who was born and raised in Ireland and knit for stores in Dublin, knit Aran Island sweaters for stores in Dublin, kind of put me behind the eight ball. I didn't have a choice. I had to learn how to knit. And so I've been knitting for a very long time. And now I have the wonderful opportunity to create my own yarns and to take those yarns and not only knit them, but to do what Sharon has said, take pieces of yarn. If I don't have enough to make an entire sweater, I can take pieces and make a blanket or make a shawl or um, um, a hanging, a wall hanging of some sort. And it's a wonderful, quiet, peaceful, centering activity. And I so look forward to this winter time so that I can have a little bit of spare time. <laughs> and in that little bit of spare time, I'm going to be spinning and weaving because it is just so wonderful. It's a connection. For me, it's a connection. It's, it's a creativity, an aspect of creating something out of nothing and of standing in a continuum of lots and lots of people through centuries of human development where you're making something that is utilitarian in some way, which is, I think, important. Uh, whether it's just pretty utilitarian or whether it's keeping you warm is, is immaterial, but it is in some way a useful product. And, and you're also standing in the continuum of the god and goddess as creators. So if you're accessing your own creativity, you are then better able to appreciate the creation around you and to possibly connect with other beings on the planet and, and, and have a, a flow between them and you as well as between you and your materials and that whole thing. One of the wonderful things about the Comfort Shawl is that we had talked um, at several craft wises mm -hmm. ago about weaving and health Mm -hmm. and producing shawls for people who were ill, um, women with cancer, uh, with breast cancer. It's National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, in case you didn't know, in case you haven't watched several other incredible shows like Rosie O'Donnell, who was very, very, very active in breast cancer awareness. Um, and all of us need to be aware of that, men and women alike. Um, but the idea of weaving shawls or a pillow or making something where you put love and healing energy into it, you're not just giving someone a pillow. Yeah. It's, you're giving yeah. them a piece of yourself and a piece of your community and a piece of your heart and a, and a little bit of good positive energy that they can draw on in times that are dark and terrifying and scary. And I think it's very, very important that we remind people that this is a very healing activity. Yes. Not only is it healing for the person you're making the items for, but it's healing for yourself. One of the things I noticed when the shawl was being woven was what was going on in the background of the people waiting to weave or that had just woven, telling stories to each other. Yes. And the healing in those stories yes. yeah. was really important for them. And it went into the shawl as well. Yeah, That was one of the things that, that I found so absolutely incredible, being able to sit down and weave, the, physically make something was wonderful. Physically create and choose the colors was phenomenal. Um, we have a couple of moments before we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we're going to show all of you some of the wonderful things that have gone into the healing shawl. Um, hopefully some of you will have some ideas. And you know, even if you can't get a loom and make your own, make your own thread and make your own yarn and put a shawl together, you can certainly purchase a shawl and you can certainly put some charms on the fringes and put some things into it that mean very sp have very special meaning to you. And we're going to talk about some of the things that are in this shawl, give you guys some ideas about some things that you can come up with and some things that you can do. So please stay with us. We are going to be back in just a few moments. I believe this is our segment for public service announcements, so please bear with us. And we will be back very, very shortly with Sharon and Dave. And we're going to be doing some more spinning, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about weaving, too. So stay put. We'll be right back. <laughs> 